Some neuroscientists believe that they now know where consciousness lives in the brain. We may actually be able to finally tell which animals are conscious or not. We'll talk about it. Consciousness is a long debated topic. It is the perception of self, and it's very hard to pin down exactly what it is. You know, I, at least I hope you know, that you're in your head observing things, but you got a whole brain that does different stuff. Where is consciousness coming from? It's long been thought that the cortex, so the outermost layer of the brain, is what gives consciousness. That would be the portion that has evolved most recently. Or perhaps the frontal lobe that gives people consciousness, which clearly can't really be true because, you know, they did sort of lobotomize people and they still very much seem to be conscious. Essentially, people have been trying to just find one particular spot that gives people consciousness. If the entire cortex was missing, yes, somebody would be in a fully vegetative state, but as long as there was some little piece of it left, yes, people would display behaviors that would suggest being conscious. There have, of course, been people who have made it to adulthood missing a huge portion of their cortex and didn't even realize it. They may have only had mild intellectual disabilities. This kind of muddies the waters because if the cortex is extremely important in consciousness, there may be other stuff going on. We know the brain can rewire itself. You can have parts of it take over for what another part should be doing. So if anything, that might demonstrate that the cortex is necessary for consciousness, but it's not that necessary because the brain is plastic. It's complicated. And similar studies were found in animals that are not all that ethical. So one new hypothesis is that it is the inner parts of the brain. So the subcortex, the core part of your brain, that's the one that is the most ancient, but then it is refined by the cortex. So rather than it being one or the other or one single spot, it is a combination of the two. And that does make logical sense. You would need to have the basal layers of your brain in order to function, sure, and then we would probably see higher levels of function in animals that have the more developed cortex. This would also tell us that all animals are conscious to some degree. They got a brain, they are at least somewhat conscious. Not all animals have a brain. One question I think it's not adequately answered is metacognition. Metacognition is when you watch yourself think. So it's the act of observing the observer. This is where you ask yourself, why did I take the action that I'm taking? Or why am I doing this right now? Which is something I ask myself a lot. We have no way of determining if an animal has metacognition unless they can talk to us and tell us about their experience. So it was recently discovered that you could pretty accurately predict what a mouse was going to think about just by looking at its facial expressions. That means they knew what the electrical activity in the mouse's brain was going to be and could correctly map them by looking at their face. In this study, they demonstrated that mice were already imagining taking an action before they took it. We already knew that animals build mental maps, but we didn't know that they acted those maps out before they moved. This is kind of like when you're thinking about taking an action and you're not totally sure if you're gonna go left or you're gonna go right, apparently your brain models both. What we don't know is if the animal is experiencing that as a willful act or it's entirely subconscious. Now we actually do a lot of stuff subconsciously too. My morning routine would be very difficult if I had to imagine every single step, but I am a scientist and going on autopilot is slightly dangerous, so I tried to train myself out of it. The point is there is probably a good deal of overlap but we're never going to be able to know. I think maybe we do have a responsibility to treat all life as though it could potentially suffer rather than just doing what we as scientists have done for a long time, which is assuming they don't suffer. They're too different from us. Surely their pain cannot matter. But I also like to imagine that my pets have something going on in there. I can't prove it.